Uh, is the camera running? I'm um, okay. First of all, let me say that I know the camera adds 10 pounds. <laughs> so right now with the extra 60 plus 10, I look like a beached whale. Um, I know I should have a statement prepared, but I planned to get up early this morning and well, I didn't get up. Do you know how hard it is to get up? If the thought of lying in warm urine didn't gross me out, I'd probably never get up. <laughs> Unfortunately, right now I'm on the toilet 20 times a night. <laughs> oh, and then the other night, I fell asleep on the toilet. Fast asleep. When I woke up, I couldn't even remember if I'd already wiped or not. And I had like permanent toilet seat indent on my ass. <laughs> Sorry, that's probably not an appropriate word to use. But bum sounds so, I guess I should get used to using words like that. Why, you might ask? Well, in case you haven't noticed, I'll let you in on a little secret. I'm pregnant. <laughs> yep, got a bun in the oven in the family way, knocked up, knocked right up. <laughs> so I guess you could say that's the main impact. I can no longer see my feet. I can no longer fit into my clothes. I can no longer turn a man's head. Just as well, I wouldn't exactly be interested in, probably never will be again. I know what you're thinking. Is she going to keep it? That's what they whisper when I enter a room. Well, first of all, turns out it's not an it. <laughs> yeah, it's a boy. They showed me his teeny weeny on the screen. Asked me if I wanted to keep a photo. No thanks. At first, that was the clincher. There was no way I was going to raise a boy. Why? So he could grow up to be... Okay. Impact. Impact. Well, my dad couldn't look at me at first when he came to pick me up at the hospital. And I could see it in his eyes. It was one of those times I could see how much he missed my mom, how much he wished that she was here to deal with it. Sorry, Pops. It's just you and me, and... Now Junior here, and believe me, I wish there was someone else who could have come to you. But when you live alone with two cats, you can't really expect whiskers to bring a change of clothes for you and pick you up at the hospital. I couldn't even stay alone in my apartment. Had to move back into the old house. Single, pregnant, 29 years old, with two cats, and living with my widowed father. Not quite the future I dreamed of. Oh, and we lived together for a couple of months and barely said a word to one another. Not much different from when I was growing up. <laughs> Only now the silence had a whole other meaning. And then one day, he came into my bedroom and he looked at me for the first time since I had... I mean, he looked. And he really saw me. And then he broke down. I'd never seen my dad cry before, even at Mom's funeral. And then you know what he did? Without me even knowing about it, he got all these, these guys together, all these guys who had daughters, girlfriends, wives, sisters, all who had been... all like me. He starts the support group, and they start doing all this work, all this work teaching men, teaching them how to love women. And, and now he looks at me, and he is so proud. And I'm just bursting. Something started to change. Like, all of a sudden, there's this, this light, this possibility growing inside of me. Sorry. That's not what I'm supposed to be talking about. I mean, I know I'm supposed to be letting you know how my life has been forever changed by what was done to me. See, when I decided to do this, well, really, it was my dad's idea. He said I should face it like part of my healing so I can move on. <laughs> I guess he was hoping I would take the time to write a real victim's impact statement and it would be like some catharsis for me or something. He said he'd come to court with me too, but of course the wheels of justice turn very slowly and so here we are with me about to pop at any second. So you've been forced to settle for a virtual me. If you wanted the real impact, the kind of impact that would be more useful. 
You should have seen me six months ago when I was puking my guts out, not just because of the baby either, puking up stuff from deep inside of me, wanting to vomit it all out, couldn't look at myself in the mirror, wanting to cut this thing out of me, staring at the razor blades in my bathroom cupboard, filled with venom and dirt, swelling with filth, thinking I would never be clean again, thinking that... You know, every woman thinks about it. Every woman worries about it. And I thought, if it happened to me, I couldn't live after. I thought, I'd tell him to kill me. I'd say, you're going to have to kill me first because I won't let you do this to me while I'm still living and breathing. I thought it was the worst thing that could happen. No, the filth's not all gone, but I got a baby to raise. I got paint samples to go through for the crib, my dad, Bill. I've got baby booties to knit, and my dad. He wants me to talk at his uh, men against violence against women rally. If mom could see him now, man, if she could see us now, all those years she tried to get us into family counseling. <laughs> so I guess I, I really don't have much to say. I mean, I don't really have a statement anymore. As far as he goes, I don't know him. I don't want to know him. He needs to be put somewhere, somewhere where he can learn to be a real man, a man like my dad. And I don't think prison's going to do that for him. And don't get me wrong, there's lots of days I just wish he would rot in hell, but that's not going to change anything. I mean, he needs help. So, to answer your question, yeah, I'm going to keep this light that's growing inside of me. I am going to have a boy. And this boy, he's going to grow up to be a man like my dad. He is going to grow up and love women. Man, I just hope he comes soon. Excuse me, I got a piss uh, tinkle. <laughs>